Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome to another episode of News Dose, where I give you the latest news in video games. And yeah, there was a lot of subscription service-based news today, with both Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation now making some announcements. So we will talk all about that, plus we now have a little tease about an Xbox first party studio, and what they might be working on for Xbox Scarlet. So you're going to want to hear all about that, but first let's talk about PlayStation Now, because yes, in a big move today, PlayStation Now cut the price of the service down to $10 a month, or even better, $60 a year. This obviously will get people paying attention to PlayStation Now again, as Xbox Game Pass has really been dominating the headlines over the last year and a half. And of course, you also have Google Stadia, which is kind of lurking at the moment, but really, the number one thing you want when it comes to a subscription service is good content. Which is why Sony added God of War, Uncharted 4, Infamous Second Son, and Grand Theft Auto 5. But, and there is a big but here, because unfortunately, these games will only be available for a limited amount of time. And in fact, it will only be two months before they take them off of PlayStation Now. And this is where I really have to question Sony, because it just kind of seems that Sony has one foot in and one foot out of PlayStation now. They're just not really completely committing. While yes, the price reduction is certainly a big deal and makes the service much more enticing, I still believe the biggest issue is not price, as PlayStation Now was already available for $100 a year previously, which is actually $20 cheaper than Xbox Game Pass. And we know that PlayStation Now wasn't really selling that great with only 700,000 subscriptions after being on the market for 5 years. I however do believe the number one issue with PlayStation Now still remains, which is their policy and strategy for their first party games. I often joke that PlayStation Now should be called PlayStation Yesterday, because it's all of yesterday's content, it's just all old, and you're not really getting anything new. And I ask myself, has that really changed? Well, no, it hasn't changed. So when I look at Xbox Game Pass, and the reason it's so enticing, it's because they're releasing all of their first party games on Xbox Game Pass, day one, such as Gears 5, Forza Horizon 4, and Sea of Thieves. Plus, on top of that, you get several third party games on Game Pass, day one, such as Ashen and Outer Wilds, which is not to be confused with Outer Worlds, which will also be on Game Pass Day 1. So in other words, I'm literally saving money because I get all these games Day 1 instead of going out and have to buy them. And, and then all of the rest of the library is kind of like extras that I may not have tried if it wasn't for Xbox Game Pass, but I definitely play them now. So it's those Day 1 games that attracts me, but I stay for all the rest, if that makes any sense. And Xbox first party games aren't going to disappear from the service. Gears 5 will always be on Xbox Game Pass, while God of War is being removed after only two months, and I don't really get that. With Sony's strategy, you don't get that new content, and okay, I get it. Some of Sony's first party games have been highly successful, much more successful than Xbox this generation. I mean, God of War, Uncharted, and Spider-Man are all games that have sold 10 million copies. So that is often the argument as to why they wouldn't want those games on PlayStation Now day one. And okay, I get that. But let's not act like everything Sony releases turns out to be a huge success. This generation alone, Sony's closed two different studios and sold off another one. They have released games such as Knack, and that wasn't a huge success, and then games like Little Big Planet and Gravity Rush 2 aren't nearly as successful as Sony's 10 million sellers such as Spider-Man. So yes, I do think releasing games like the upcoming Media Molecule game Dreams and Concrete Genie Day One on PlayStation Now, and I think that would be pretty nice. I don't think these type of games are going to be nearly as successful as some of their big AAA games such as God of War. So why not release them on PlayStation Now day one? Regardless though, I just don't think Sony has fixed the main issue with PlayStation Now. Now maybe if they bring new Sony games to the service quickly, and it doesn't even have to be day one necessarily, but just, you know, bring them to the service, you know, on a, on a regular basis pretty quickly, then I might change my mind on that. I mean, the price is certainly outstanding right now at $60 a year. That is a very good deal, but to me, and this is just me, 
This was the equivalent to slashing the price of a game that only slightly interests me. I'm still not going to buy it, but the price is at least more in line with what I think it's worth. I mean, $60 really is a phenomenal price, and there's a lot of games in the service, and it's actually more than Xbox Game Pass has. It's just old games. I just, I don't know. What do you all think, though? Let me know in the comments below, and I'm okay if you disagree with me here, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. In other news, keeping in line with subscription services, Xbox Game Pass announced their October games, which is Ukulele, World War Z, Dishonored 2, Fallout New Vegas, and Panzer Dragoon Orda. You also will get two day one launch games with the highly anticipated Outer Worlds and Felix the Reaper. So yes, this is another big month for Xbox Game Pass, and I'm especially looking forward to playing Outer Worlds. That game just looks excellent, and especially if you like Western RPGs. And one other thing about Game Pass is, if you haven't already got Xbox Game Pass Ultimate yet, it now includes a 6 month Spotify Premium Pass. Now, this is only for members who haven't joined yet, so if you already have it, then you're out of luck here. Up next, we got a tidbit of information on Ninja Theory's next game. Of course, they are working on Bleeding Edge, but I know a lot of people really seem to be interested in what their other team is working on, especially the team that made Hellblade, which to this day I think is one of the best single player games of this generation. Well, if you're hoping that Ninja Theory would scale up and make another AAA title, well, based off the job listing they posted, that is exactly what they're doing. It says Ninja Theory is looking for an exceptional character artist with individual artistic flair, high-end technical ability, and good problem-solving skills. The ideal candidate should be excited at the prospect of working within a small, focused team delivering AAA titles. We are aiming to set the bar for real-time characters. This will involve high-end modeling, texturing, shader work, and an ability to carry this over into real-time using Unreal Engine. I think the key thing here is a small focus team, which really goes in line with how they made Hellblade. Ninja Theory never really used a big team to make Hellblade, and they were actually a very small team even then. And it seems that is their goal yet again with their next title, to keep it small, but have a large scope. Either way, based off the reaction to Bleeding Edge, which is a little different than Ninja Theory's last few games, I think this is really good news and hopefully we won't have to wait too long to figure out exactly what they're working on. I know I'm really excited to see what they're working on because, well, they got a fan out of me after playing Hellblade, that's for sure. That game is just... I love that game. Anyways, that's it for this episode, but let me know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button. Peace out.